Hello everyone, I am Tim with Golf Cart Garage. We're back once again with our weekly Q&A session where we go over some golf cart related questions that we acquire all week long at Golf Cart Garage. We come here every week, we come here every Thursday, and we are live. We are live right now on YouTube and Facebook, and we are every Thursday at noon central time. So if you are seeing this and it's 12 o'clock noon, you're seeing me live. And let's see, we're gonna have we're going to do a short one today. We're changing things up a little bit this week. We're going to we're going to do actually start doing two sessions. We're going to do two live videos. So this is going to be a short video where we're going to answer I don't know eight or nine uh, regular questions. Maybe interact with some live chatters, and then we're going to immediately do another one after this is over. After we end this session, so there will be two videos today, uh, and they're going to be short. So let me just check real quick for anybody's in the live chat already. Looks like we're good there. Uh, like I said, I am Tim. I'm part of the Gearheads On Demand service that we offer at Golf Cart Garage. Uh, Gearheads On Demand is a service that we offer where you can actually schedule a phone call with me if you need to ask some questions of somebody who may have been there before, or may have seen what, or may know a little bit something about what your issue is, may be able to help you, may be able to save you some money. Uh, just click on the link in the description if you're interested in that service and that will take you to the scheduling page where you can schedule a you can schedule a uh, phone call with me or you can actually schedule a video session with me where I will send you a link to your phone at whatever time you picked and then you just click the link and I can see through your camera and see what you're pointing at sometimes that might help uh, it's not always necessary sometimes that may help all right, we only have a few questions to go over today before we end the end this video. So let's go ahead and get started since the garage is now open. Let's see. Question one. I have an EasyGo electric golf cart. Older model uses six six volt batteries. The cart will not go forward or back. That switch is supposedly good. If the voltage is reading less than 36 volts, could the batteries be the problem? Well, yes, that's why I always say I always try to eliminate the batteries as being a problem on any electric golf cart, and no matter what the symptom is, pretty much. I mean, it's almost, that's the first thing that I need to do is eliminate the batteries as being the problem. And when you say it's less than 36 volt, my question would be, well, how much less? I mean, if it's too much less, then yeah, that, that's definitely going to be your problem. It, it, it is causing it not to go forward and reverse. But if it's just a little less, you still should have some type of activity when you hit the gas pedal or the accelerator pedal. So my question would just be, uh, how much less than 36 volts are we talking about? But it, it could be the problem, yes. Number two, I have a 2014 EasyGo TXT gas. I have replaced the carburetor, fuel pump, and filter, air filter, spark plug, fuel filter, and it runs fine at low speed, but when you go wide open for about an eighth of a mile, it acts like it's running out of gas, but if you sit there for five minutes, you can go that far again. Any help would be appreciated. Uh, it sounds like to me that it's very possible that you could have something shutting down after the car warms up, after it gets hot, and it doesn't get hot enough unless you go wide open, like you were saying. You know, so it very well could be that I may have spoken to this person this week because I, I sort of remember having this conversation uh, with someone this week, and I think we determined that it was the igniter could possibly be shutting down after it gets hot and the cart's losing spark rather than losing fuel or something. It's losing spark. Uh, so I believe that's where we, uh, what we had decided. I, I don't know if the customer, you know, ordered the igniter and fixed the problem or not. I haven't heard back on that one, but that would be where I would be leaning toward on that one. Let's see. We'll come back to number three. Let me just check and see if I got anybody in the live chat. Yeah, we do. I got James Brown the third. What's up, James Brown? How can I exchange my old starter generator for another one or a refund? Well, you contact Golf Cart Garage and talk to any of the operators there and they, they can help you with that. There's no doubt about it. Uh, David Klein. What's up, David Klein? Says, hey, Tim. What's up, David? Let's see. Mm -hmm. 
Where was we at? Number three, okay. 91 club card DS48 boat. Accelerator wiper, response is spotty, sometimes stops, new controller, new rebuilt motor, did not cure the problem. A 91 Club Card DS48 volt. That's the first uh, red flag. Not necessarily a red flag. I don't know if Club Card had 48 volt cars in 91. So if it is a 48 volt car, is it a uh, is it been modified to be 48 volts? I'd, I'd have several questions. I need to get that cleared up first because uh, I, I don't think Club Car made 48 volt cars in 91. Uh, but I'd, I'd need to get that part cleared up first uh, to see what we're talking about there. Number four. How do you determine if the controller is not functioning? Well, there are, depending on the electrical system of the golf cart, there's different, there's different tests and everything to different complicated tests that I'm not going to get into right now. But I, I can tell you most of the time in a golf cart shop, most of the time what they do is they eliminate everything else. And then it, what's left is the controller. There's not that many components in a golf cart. There's not a real good, there's not a good easy bench test or there's not a bench test for a controller. It has to be under power and everything hooked up. Uh, you, you can eliminate the solenoid. You know, if the solenoid's clicking, that means you're getting power to the controller. If the car's not moving, then it's either the, there's only two things behind the solenoid and that's the controller and the motor. So then you go eliminate the motor. You eliminate the motor by doing the easy motor test where you jumper two of the cables and put 12 volts to the motor. And if the motor spins, it's, it's generally good. That's generally the test you do that. Well, you just eliminated everything in front of the controller and you eliminated behind the controller. So the only thing left is the controller. That's the, that's the way that it's most of the time that it's done. But like I said, you can put a voltmeter in specific areas and, and test the output of the controller depending on which electrical system you have. It was just a little bit different test. Let's see. I'm going to be on number five after now. Let's go over here and see. Uh, you got Herb Caldwell on YouTube says howdy. What's up, Herb Caldwell? Good to have you. Number five. This is from Nathaniel. Hello, I would like to know if it would be possible to build a golf cart. When I say build, I mean 100% custom, as they would say, start from the bottom, move to the top, bottom being nothing but parts and a dream to a working, moving golf cart. Is this a possibility or am I, or am I way over my head? This is definitely a possibility. Uh, many people have done that. Now. I would have quite, I could I could help you with that. I, I, I would have some suggestions and I could even help you uh, give you some advice on that. So if you're interested in talking to me about that as a project, click the link in the description and schedule a call with me and we can talk about that. But you need to decide if you're going to use a golf cart frame or, you, or you're going to do it in some other type of frame. Uh, and depending on what frame you get, would make, it would you know, it would change my opinion on which electrical system that you might want to go with. Like if you were going with a, if you got a club car DS frame, you could get a whole IQ electrical system and put in there. If you got an easy go TXT frame, that would be another thing. It would be easier to go with the TXT setup. Uh, if you got a marathon frame, that would be, you know, that would be easy. But if you, if you were going to start with a frame that wasn't a golf cart frame, if you're just going to start with some type of vehicle frame, then I would have a suggestion on that. I would go with a marathon wiring diagram because a marathon uses a very simple wiring diagram, a controller marathon, not the resistor type, but a controller marathon car, easy go marathon. Get a hold of a wiring diagram for an easy go marathon and look at that wiring diagram. It's a very simple wiring diagram. You can make every one of the wires yourself. It uses a very simple zero to five K potentiometer. Uh, it does use a controller, but it's a series controller. It's a series system. No regenerative braking or anything like that. It just, it just depends on how fancy you want to go with this vehicle and if it is going to be based off of a golf cart frame or not. So there's lots of choices, but it is definitely possible for you to do.
Number six. Red light showing on Lester Summit 2 Series. Hi guys, suddenly the red light on the charger is lit. Batteries are about five years old. All right, that's the first red flag. Charger a little over two years old. Used as normal after round plug charged in. Yellow light flashed as usual. Next morning, red light was on. Batteries were fully charged. Well, that red light is definitely a fault code that the charger sensed while charging the car. So, you it would be good to eliminate the charger as, as having a problem by putting it on someone else's car but you did say that your batteries are five years old so that would not be unusual at all for it to have sensed a problem it might be time for a new set of batteries and the only way i would know that is i would like to get some battery readings from you like i'd like to get the battery readings while the car is just sitting there and then i'd like to some on charge battery readings while the chart after the charger's been run for a while and just to see if I'll see if your voltage is rising to the correct range or not. Let's see. Just checking. Let's see. Herb Caldwell is asking a question on YouTube. 36 volt TXT forward and reverse switch on the dash reverse does not work after running the cart for a little bit always works when I first use it okay so if you have a 48 if you have a 36 volt TXT and your forward and reverse switch is on the dash that means you have an easy go PDS cart that's the that's a precision drive system electrical system in that car uh, and is this a my question would be is this a lifted cart because I can tell you this PDS carts don't really, at least 36 volt PDS carts, they don't really like to be lifted because it puts a little bit more of a strain on the electrical system and if you are running a completely stock controller then it's very possible that your controller is getting hot and shutting down on you. That's why it always works when you first use it and then the controller gets hot and it, and it shuts, it completely shuts down. So tell me in the chat, uh, I'll come back to you here in a minute. Tell me in the chat, Herb, if your cart is lifted or not. Okay, we are on number seven. Battery light flashes after playing around nine holes and cart sputters frequently. Check batteries as they show 8.5 each. Six 8 volt battery seems like a short or something could it be the solenoid all right you see that word sputter that that uh brings up a red flag right there anytime any, i may have said this before but anytime a customer would come to my shop and they would describe the symptom of their cart as a shutter or a sputter most of the time and, it, and we're talking about electric i'm talking about electric carts if they would describe it like shake or shutter or it would sputter on or take off most of the time it was a battery related issue now when i say battery related i don't necessarily mean that you got a bad battery i i could I, that could battery related could be any of the cables that are connecting your six batteries together you could have a loose connection on any of those cables or one of the big power cables leaving the batteries like to the forward and reverse switch wherever your big cables go on your particular electrical system you could have a battery that's even though you did state you know that your voltage was there you could have a battery that's dropping and out under load once you try to take off it could be dropping out that can cause a sputter or a shutter so that's why i've talked about this before that's why i talk about doing a doing a type of load test on your battery like putting a voltmeter getting some alligator clip leads for your voltmeter and clipping it to one battery, bringing the voltmeter up in the seat with you and watching your voltage as you drive the cart. But you're just watching that voltage on that one battery and see if you find, and then go to the next battery, do the same thing and see if you notice one of those batteries dropping down way more than the others. That can cause a sputter or shutter. Okay. Let's see, that was number seven there that we did. Okay, so now we're going to do, we got number eight, but let me see. Okay, Herb says his cart is not lifted. All right, I have seen uh, PDS, 36 volt PDS carts still go into thermal shutdown 
even when they're not lifted. Just just lifted makes it even worse. So if uh, if I'm understanding your symptom correctly, then that's what it sounds like to me. If I'm, you got to understand, I'm assuming that your batteries are fine because it, that thermal shutdown feels exactly like uh, dead batteries. Let's see. All right. We'll go to number eight, and this is going to be the last regularly scheduled question is number eight. But like I said, we're splitting the video this week, so I will be ending this session after number eight, and then we'll, we'll, we're going to start another session. My 2011 Club Car Precedent 48 volt extended cab extended cab suddenly has gotten where when I depress the uh, electric accelerator it sometimes does nothing sometimes does a little bit and other times if I keep pushing it down to the floor it'll go so what gives well that, that sounds kind of familiar that's that's uh I've seen a MCOR make that sim symptom a lot of times people start having trouble in their acceleration or it's intermittent uh, and they just step on the gas a whole bunch of times and they it has been known to so you get when you press on the accelerator pedal on an electric club car that uses the M core as a potentiometer what you're doing is you're twisting a rod inside the M core which is it's going across contacts in there somewhere it's going across some, some electrical contacts and those M core is supposed to be a completely sealed system to not allow anything to get inside there, but I can tell you this, they will get moisture in them just from condensation or something. And so they'll get on the contacts, contacts get dirty. And sometimes you just mash the uh, accelerator pedal over and over again, and it will help clean those contacts off. So that could be what's happening. That's what it would sound like to me it, it is what could be happening with you. Let's see here. That was the last scheduled question for today because we're trying out some new stuff. Let me make sure I got everybody on YouTube. Yep, that's going to be it. Uh, let's see. Don't forget to go to golfcartgarage.com. Look for the logo of Extreme Golf Cart Makeover Season 2. The winners have been announced. And if you'd like to go see the video, of the, the video's been released. The winners have been announced. It's on YouTube. The video is up on YouTube. So go to YouTube and go to Golf Cart Garage and subscribe to Golf Cart Garage if you haven't already on YouTube. And, uh, and check out Dave's video where he talks to the winners of Extreme Golf Cart Makeover Season 2. Uh, don't forget, I am Tim with Gearheads on Demand service at Golf Cart Garage. You uh, you can uh, schedule a, Gearheads on Demand is where you can schedule an appointment with me. If you're interested in that, click on click the link in the description. And uh, we will end this uh, episode 49, but we're going to start a new episode here in a few minutes. We'll be starting episode 50 here in a few minutes. Let me make sure I don't miss anything over here. Let's see. Herb Caldwell says his batteries are in great shape. Okay. Well, if your batteries are good and your cart's still shutting down for no reason like that, I would suspect the controller, since I know what cart you have, since you have a PDS. That's where I would suspect. Uh, if, if there's nothing obvious, you know, if you don't see anything obvious. Obviously check for cables and, and also check for heat. Like when it shuts down, uh, just start grabbing your cables. You know, grab your cables with your hands and see if you can find anything that's getting unusually hot. And if you would like, take the cover off of your controller and check it for getting hot too. So, because that, that that may answer your question, you may you may feel a lot of heat inside there if you take that cover off. That's what I would do. Let's see. Yep, that looks like it's going to be about it. Well, we're going to end this session. This is episode forty-nine. We come here every week, we, and at this time, we're going to we're going to start shooting two videos every week. So. Uh, I'll be back here in a few minutes. The garage is now closed.